In this video, I don't really want to look at anything with regard to the chain rule. That's what we've been looking at in class for the last couple days. I want to look at something that's more of an interpretive thing, something that we can pretty much do on an ongoing basis all year long. And we never really had a good chance in class over the last week or so to have this discussion. So I'd like to try to have it with you in this video. So I have four graphs on this page. And if you look at the two graphs at the top of the page and the two graphs at the bottom of the page, and I asked you to tell me what you know about the derivative of the top two graphs, you'd hopefully say, well, check out the slopes of those tangent lines. The slopes of the tangent line, anywhere you look on this graph, they're always positive. So you'd probably say that f prime of x is greater than zero because f prime of x determines the slope of the tangent line on a graph and the slope of the tangent line is always positive here. So f prime of x is always greater than zero, slope of the tangent line is always positive. Same thing can be said over here about this graph, right? You have a steep positive slope, you have more level, more level, more level, more level, more level positive slope, but the slope is always positive, so you'd also be able to say that this graph is one whose first derivative is always positive. Similarly, at the bottom of the page, Looking at these two graphs, slope of the tangent line anywhere you look on this graph is always going to end up being negative. Slope of the tangent line anywhere you look on this graph is always going to end up being negative. So these two graphs would both have negative derivatives for the portions of them that I have sketched. So f prime of x is less than zero, f prime of x is less than zero, simply because the slope of the tangent line is always less than zero on these two graphs. You'd argue that these two graphs are increasing. They go up as we go from left to right. And the fact that the derivative is positive everywhere on both of them is not a coincidence. An increasing graph, the derivative will always be positive. And on a decreasing graph, going downward as we go from left to right, downward as we go from left to right, the derivative will always be negative. The next comparison that I want to make is with regard to the two in the left-hand column. So in this left-hand column, I have an increasing graph, I have a decreasing graph. These two graphs have something in common. If you remember anything about curvature or concavity from a past year's class, these are both what we would say are concave up. They're cupped upward. This one's cupped upward. This one's also cupped upward. These two are both cupped downward. So these are concave up. These are concave down. If you look at these two graphs, though, I want to think about the second derivative of them. The second derivative is the rate of change of the first derivative because the second derivative is just the derivative of the first derivative. So one more time. The second derivative is the rate of change of the first derivative. Look at the rate of change of the first derivative. Look at the rate of change of the slope of the tangent line to this graph. I have a small positive slope, bigger positive slope, bigger positive slope, bigger positive slope. My slopes are increasing on this graph. Because my slopes are increasing on this graph, the rate of change of the first derivative is positive or the second derivative is positive. My slopes are increasing. My second derivative is positive. This one, it's a little trickier than the top one because it's easy to say, well, these slopes are getting more level. And yeah, they are getting more level, but the numerical value of those slopes is still increasing because you have a steep negative slope, so a value like negative 10, you have a more level negative slope. So maybe the slope of this line would be something like negative 5. And then you have a pretty level negative slope here, maybe like negative 1. So the slope is still increasing in numerical value. Since the slope of the tangent line is increasing, the rate of change of what determines those slopes is increasing. And what determines the rate of change of those slopes is the second derivative. Remember, the second derivative is the rate of change of the first derivative. Since the slopes of the tangent line are increasing here, we have a graph that is decreasing, but it's decreasing at an increasing rate. You had a drastic drop-off across this small portion of the x-axis. You didn't have as drastic a drop-off over a segment of the same width over here. Right? You had a, a big change from here to here across one unit. If you go one unit over here, you have very little change from this y value to this y value.
right? So it is always decreasing, but it's doing so at a, an increasing rate. Similarly, the two graphs in the right-hand column have something happening with their second derivatives as well. The slopes on this graph start as pretty steep positives, and then they become more and more level positives. So we have a slope of maybe positive 5, positive 1, positive 1 half. <coughs> Excuse me. The slopes of the tangent lines are decreasing as we progress across this graph from left to right. Since the slope of the tangent line is decreasing as we move across this graph, the rate of change of the slope of the tangent line, or the value of the second derivative, is going to have to be negative. So if something is decreasing, its rate of change is negative. Slope of tangent line's rate would be determined by the second derivative, the rate of change of the first derivative. And then down here you have you know, a small negative slope, maybe negative one-tenth, negative one, negative five, negative ten. The slopes are decreasing in numerical value, so the rate of change of the first derivative is negative, or the second derivative is negative. So these four graphs all kind of mean something different. This one is increasing at an increasing rate, Right, always positive slopes, and they're becoming more and more positive. This one is increasing, but at a decreasing rate. Right, We're still increasing, but we're starting to level off. We're not increasing as much out here as we were over here. This one is decreasing at an increasing rate. We're dropping off a lot at first, but then not as much as we progress across the graph. And this one would be decreasing at a decreasing rate. You start off with a small decrease and then as you move across that graph you end up with a larger and larger decrease. This is something that we'll talk about off and on throughout the course of the year. There is a type 1 that you can respond to that is kind of dependent on this discussion so give that a chance and I'll see you tomorrow in class.